Marshall Thundering Herd are getting set to take the field. Coming off back-to-back -back wins, scoring 61 and 56 points respectively. Welcome to Fox College Thursday as the Marshall Thundering Herd come to town to take on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane here at H.A. Chapman Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, you can see this is a big game for Marshall as they are tied in the loss column with East Carolina in the East Division of Conference USA. So they are now trying to stay even and keep the pace with East Carolina. But he's played a lot of football and he's played quality football. Conference USA's MVP from a year ago and he's playing his best right now, both physically and mentally. They've given him a lot at the line of scrimmage in the Jet game to try to get him into the right play, the offense into the right play, and he's handled it beautifully. That's why they're scoring 42 points, which is 10th in the country right now. He's playing great. And this is a special night for Marshall, the 43rd anniversary of that plane crash that killed 75 people, including almost the entire Marshall football team. For more on this, let's go down to Christina Pink. Well, Justin, the players telling me that they are honored to wear that 75 on their helmets tonight in remembrance of those 75 victims of that devastating plane crash. They have already observed a moment of silence here on the field. And normally we would have had the opening kickoff already, but tonight Tulsa has pushed the kick back one minute to 636 Central, 736 Eastern time, the exact moment that tragedy happened 43 years ago. May I have your attention, please? 43 years ago, the worst sports-related air tragedy in U.S. history occurred. A plane carrying 75 people associated with the Marshall University football program and flight crew crashed just short of Tri-State Airport near Huntington, West Virginia at 7.36 p.m. Eastern Time. Tonight's kickoff of 6.36 Central Time commemorates the exact time of that tragic event. A really nice gesture by the entire Tulsa athletic department and university. They asked for permission. They asked Marshall if they would be okay to back it up one minute to commemorate and honor those victims. And I think that's really, really classy. They will defer, Tulsa will receive. Emma Reddell Curry will kick off. Zach Langer, Jeterian Douglas are back deep. Wearing those 75 decals, Marshall kicks off, we're underway. Douglas lets this one go over his head. One of the better Marshall defenses of all time. Yeah, this Marshall defense from last year to this year, unbelievable. They are 22.2 points per game better as far as allowing points per game. That's, that's unreal. Unreal and harder for a team that has a fast-paced offense. On first down, Chaterian Douglas. And Douglas will get back to the line of scrimmage. He's one of the best guys in the country when you just come to spin in the football. On second and ten, has to get out of the pocket. He does, sets and throws, and that pass is complete, this time to Smith. Quick pass, swung out. Caught by Gator Hoskins. Hoskins, Hoskins a couple of nice moves. Gets up to the 29-yard line, tackled by Will Barrow. Gator Hoskins is a tight end, but he's also a slot guy. There he is in the slot. This is just a smoke route, which means turn around and catch the ball. Cato puts it right on him. Third and 10. Cato goes to his favorite receiver, Schuler, who dives for the end zone. Touchdown. There's that combination. Cato to Schuler. The seventh time they've hooked up this year for a touchdown. Mitchell Osborne almost was able to knock this down, the linebacker who's really in a mismatch with Schuler, and that ball got right by him at the last second. This is the difficulty when you get into an injury situation like Tulsa has had all year. They've got regular linebackers on. They've got to play a clean game if they want to stay close to the thundering herd. On first down, the handoff is to Watts, and Watts will get a couple yards, setting up second down. To I was thinking Tulsa was going to try to feature Watts a little bit more early. How about that play getting into the backfield by Stefan Houston, a true freshman. A loss of five on the play. You're going to see him pop into the backfield on the end around. 
The cut is missed by Chris Hall, and that play was going nowhere from the start. Robertson doing a good job of just protecting the ball because on an end around when you're running through that contact zone on the heel line of the offensive line and somebody shows up I mean that's a shock they were picked to win the West you know this is the conference champion from a year ago they had their quarterback coming back their Mike linebacker coming back their running back coming back it just hasn't panned out for them on first down the pass is complete to Tommy Schuler, who gets five yards second and five coming up this matchup at the bottom of your screen is just going to get scorched Cato Going down the sideline as Devon Smith into the end zone for the touchdown. And that's what happens when you pay too much attention to the slot guy. Somebody on the outside can really hurt you. At that time, Michael Mudo just with a complete and total coverage breakdown in the Tulsa secondary, Joel. Well, and that's because you're trying to walk out with a linebacker. So all the secondary's eyes have to go where? To the slot receiver that's the most dangerous that came in with 65 catches. These are just slim, slim pickings for Tulsa's defense and their injuries and easy pickings for the thundering herd. Not even a great thrown ball by Rakeem Cato. He's going to look at that in film. He's very self-critical and be unhappy, but it didn't matter. There was nobody, literally nobody in the area. The final three weeks in the Big 12. Dane Evans on first down trying to set up the screen. Now throws across the middle, and that was almost intercepted. Neville Hewitt was right there. The pass intended for Keevan Lucas. And you never want to throw a screen late, especially over the middle. Evans has to improvise a little bit. And when his receiver comes open, he throws it behind Lucas. An ill-advised throw. And that is a massive number. Stewart Butler in that tailback. How about the fake there by Cato? He'll die. And he'll be marked down at the 34-yard line. Gets four yards. Second down and six. Hand off to Butler. And Butler trips up at the right around the 40. Get back into your round. On second down, it's Butler. Spin move, and he'll dive forward up to the 45. Jackson with his second tackle. Third and five here. Cato rolling out to his right. Throws for Schuler, who makes the catch, gets the feet in bounds. Same situation, Joel. And he just had to break off his route. This is what the miscommunication, or I should say, nonverbal communication is with a guy who's been in high school with the quarterback. He's going to the out route. That's what it was supposed to be. Here's an opportunity for the Golden Hurricane to get some momentum in this game at home. Talaferro in. They hand off to him. Not going to get that momentum as he gets the first down. Guy Sean Jackson, they're going to send him on a blitz. He's right in the middle of your screen, but gets cut down. An excellent block at the line of scrimmage by Sebastian Johansson. Johansson gets him down to the ground, and he's the one guy in that middle linebacker spot that was going to run down something going east and west towards the sidelines. Great block. Gets him down, though. New set of downs. Cato taking that shot to Hoskins. Touchdown. 22-yard touchdown pass from Cato to Hoskins. When you have three guys run for 100 yards last week, you start to honor the play action a little bit more. Look at all the linebackers, the secondary people for Tulsa just freeze long enough for Gator Hoskins to be in that. For Tulsa has totally misplayed the first part of this game offensively. The handoff is to Watts. Watts will get two yards. Jermaine Holmes. The middle linebacker. Yeah, you got to feature what you got, which is Trey Watts. On third and eight, the screen for Watts. And Watts gets tackled by Rashad Myers. Off to a fast start here in the first quarter. The first touchdown pass, the high school teammates, Cato to Tommy Schuler. Then the next drive, it's Devon Smith who will go in. And on the last drive, it was Gator Hoskins. 21-0. Can Tulsa's defense get off the field? Cato. They will not get off the field as a pass is complete to Craig Wilkins. So on third down, they don't go to Tommy Schuler. And he's just going to come in right here. And it, this is the read, that linebacker. And if he stays down and low, then you're just going to come in behind him. He overplays that ball towards the sidelines. Excellent read. So let's see if they can get off the field on this third down. Third and eight. Flag on the play. Cato. Completes the pass to Craig Wilkins again on third down. One of the best players, linebackers in this conference and really in the country. No doubt. 
Fake one way, come back the other way for Talaferro. Has the first down, and Talaferro gets tackled by Darnell Walker. Another first down here for Marshall after this 15-yard pickup. I love it. They're going to fake a little bubble screen to the left, and then the blocker's going to slide around. That's the ends up being the wide receiver. Excellent execution. And Cato really sold that bubble screen. Another third down, third and ten. Marshall six for seven on third down so far. Cato looking for another tight end and Devin Johnson and Johnson. He's got the first down as he's up to the nine. It looked like maybe he was going for Schuler, but it was Devin Johnson cutting in front on that route. And Devin Johnson, he's a guy that lines up on the inside, and he's just going to work again on another linebacker. These tight end linebacker matchups right now, way in favor of Marshall. Just an outcut to get the extra yardage, and that's why he pulled off the first down. Jatarian Douglas in the handoff to him. Tries to use a stiff arm, but there to make the stop is that freshman again, Stephon Houston, for a loss of five. Houston's got a great downhill nature to him, doesn't he? he? Flows inside out. Watch him come through number three and attacks that inside hip of the running back. That's excellent football from a young player. Second tackle for a loss in this game already. A true freshman who made his first start last week. It's a wonderful time of year. Stuart Butler in on the backfield. And the first play of this drive is swung out to Tommy Schuler. And Schuler's going to be marked out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Picks up four. Little pick play here to get Schuler open, Joe. Yeah, and I love the block. This is Devontae Allen on the outside. Watch this stock block. You love that term, right, Pete? <laughs> the stock block on the outside. But Allen executed perfectly, and he's the one that opens it up. And off to Butler. Butler breaks the tackle. Spins across the 40 up to the 42. Michael Mudo with a stop. 13 yard run by Stuart Butler. They need to get some positivity going here. At least hold on the ball for a second. Again, it's Butler. And Butler kind of exploded through that hole as he picks up 10 and a first down. Sean Jackson with his fifth tackle. It's Butler again. Another good run as he gets 11 yards this time. Do it Jennings with a tackle. I like the way that Butler is running within this space. Right now on this drive, there's a lot of space out there for the Marshall offense. But some backs, they don't know what to do with space. They'll run right into somebody or stop their feet. Butler does a good job of slicing forward and bending it back. And off to him again. Why not, right? He breaks this one. Butler tackled down at the 10-yard line by Darnell Walker. Boy, this is an answer from the Marshall offense going right back down the field on the ground. Butler, supposed to be the third string back, but you're right. He's got the wiggle and the cutback ability. Cato, throwing in the end zone. Touchdown, Hoskins. Why not go to your 6'3", 245-pound tight end? Just another mismatch. That's number 27, DeWitt Jennings. He's the linebacker. He's going to blitz, picked up beautifully by Talaferro, and then the recovery never gets there. He really wants his players to embrace the history of this program. You mentioned the 43rd anniversary of that devastating plane crash. You know, coming into the season, every member of the incoming freshman class has to watch the movie We Are Marshall. That's just an example of that. And also, this summer, for the second year in a row, he had his team run about a mile and a half the distance from the field to the Spring Hill Cemetery where there's a memorial set up for those victims, Jetson. It is pretty cool what this whole program means to Doc Holliday and as well as the Marshall School, the players, the program, the community. Really nice run by Watts there, but, but absolutely, Justin, it's part of the identity of the program. It's part of who they are and... I think they do it in a very classy, very honorable way. Well, and they, they elect captains every week. To this week, James Rouse, Rakeem Cato, Monterius Lovett, Chris Jaspers were the captains. The pass is complete to Tyler Wilson, but there on the tackle is Neville Hewitt, a pickup of three. And those captains, you know, Doc Holliday was going to address the, the, the 75, the anniversary, everything last night in his, his pregame remarks to his team. And he said, he never had to. His speech, he just kept in his pocket because the captains were the ones that addressed the team with the significance of this moment, this game, and that 75 on their helmets. That's when he knew that they understood the importance of what was going on. Third and two, and that pass is tipped at the line by Arnold Blackman. 
So now the punting unit will have to come on here for Tulsa. Active hands from a defensive lineman. Can't get to the quarterback, get those hands up. Blackman does it, the junior from Bel Air, Bel Air Texas. Cato with a shotgun from his own end zone. Hand off Talaferro. And Talaferro still on his feet as he goes down inside the 10 at the, picks up six. On second and four, Cato pump fake. Jackson got blocked, the spy, and a first down for Akeem Cato. Michael Mudo with the tackle after a pickup of 12. Yeah, watch Sebastian Johansson wall off Sean Jackson to give some light to Rakeem Cato. A very nice job of getting in the way of the, the LSU game, I would have said Florida State. On first down, Evans. The pass is caught and then fumbled. And it's recovered by Neville Hewitt of Marshall. And that's the second time Jordan James, number 12, has fumbled after a catch. You got to secure the football. This team has just been decimated by turnovers during the course of this season. 26 on the year. They're minus 13 in turnover margin. And this one is just a huge turnover in plus territory for Marshall. Taking care of the football is the biggest problem for Tulsa right now. Gary Thompson is the guy, the linebacker, that led big turnaround. Cato on first down after the turnover. Completes the pass to the far sideline to Devon Smith. Cato's pass wide open receiver is Gator Hoskins. When he's been on the field, he's been lights out tonight. Raheem Cato playing the best football of his life, and that just came right into this ball game. Tommy Schuler a touchdown catch. Smith, a touchdown catch. Hoskins, a touchdown catch. A couple of them for Hoskins, so Cato is distributing the wealth. It's exactly what they needed to start the second half. Second turnover of the night for Marshall. They hand off to Watts. It's second and 26. Cato. Stepping up, has room with Grooms. Grooms room to run. And Grooms gets back up to the 29-yard line. Cato on third down, lofting one to Grooms out of the backfield again. They convert. Remember, it was second and 26, and now it's up to the 48. And Sean Jackson, who is the spy, looking at Rakeem Cato, gets caught no man's land. And what touch Cato puts on the ball right over the middle linebacker's head. Now, that is beautiful. It's like a little free throw. And Dane Evans now only 7 to 20 for just over 100 yards. Evans on second down throws, and he completes the pass to Robertson, who gets spun around and flung to the ground by Daryl Roberts after he picks up two and both of those turnovers turned into points for Tulsa. On first down, they swim the pass quickly to Gator Hoskins, who stays in bounds, takes a couple of tacklers. And that's what we've seen here tonight. Second and seven, Cato throws, completes the pass. A first down to Craig Wilkins. Darnell Walker brings him down, a 15-yard pickup. Second down and six. Tal Farrow again. Nice cutback and Talon Farrell tackled by Jackson. A first down after an eight yard run up to the 43 yard line. Love how he chose the hole. Watch this little delay he gives as he's heading to his right. Talon Farrell right there. Delays, hits the hole and gets that first down. Excellent run. Again, Talon Farrell. Talon Farrell, another good run. Dives forward. Marshall 9 of 14 tonight. Watson. Gets the carry and gets the first down. It looked like Cato was doing the right things in the exchange. Hand off to Watts on first down, and Watts gets spun backwards by Jermaine Holm. It's a handoff to Jeterian Douglas up the middle, and Douglas will get two yards. Second and eight, Trey Watts is back in. They hand off to Watts. Watts trying to get outside. And a nice tackle that time by Evan McKelvey. Did not let him out of his grasp, a loss of one. Third and nine going into the wind. Evans taking the shot to the end zone. Incomplete. Looking for Robertson. Daryl Roberts there on the cover. As well as Taj Letman. Letman was the safety. He comes in late. 
Mm, I think he got away with it yeah. getting there a little early. He was trying. You could tell he had that arm up. He was trying to keep it from making contact. I think it probably made contact a hair early on Robertson, and Marshall gets away with one on third down. As they outscored Marshall 17 0 in that third quarter. Cato, his pass comes near side, complete to Devon Smith, and Smith has the first down. Cato. Throws, completes the pass. This time, completes it to Craig Wilkins. A good run out to the catch. A lot of the offense, especially the passing offense, has been come going, has been going right to left. Cato throws short. It's complete to Devon Smith, who came back for that. Third and ten for Marshall. Cato stepping up. There's the spot. He gets rid of it to Talaferro, who has the first down. Talaferro got tackled from behind by Dalton Rodriguez. This is when a spy gets caught in no man's land. Watch as Sean Jackson, he's gonna have Talaferro, and now he's gotta decide, well, is Cato running? So he comes off of his man, and Cato, an excellent. Jatarian Douglas in the backfield on second and eight. They give it to him. Douglas can't break free of the tacklers. Alex Bassey, Rashad Meyer. Marshall has to go a long way here. Cato stepping up. Cato's got some room to run. Nice cut, has a block now. And Cato will run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So all he has to do is keep playing his game. Cato, a quick pass once again to Wilkins. And Wilkins gets spun around. He'll get another first down. The throw again is to Smith. Tulsa sideline saying that was not a catch, but the officials say it was a nine yard completion. Really good job by Smith who slipped on the play and got back kind of on his hands and knees and scrambled forward to secure the pass and he had his arm. Cato throwing on third and one and completes it to Tommy Schuler. You know, that, that threw the whole drive out of whack, really forced this punt. Dalton Parks has struggled punting tonight into this win. A good punt this time to midfield. It's taken by DeAndre Reeves, and Reeves gets hit out of bounds. There is no flag there. Third and eight. Cato zips one to Schuler. Schuler, he gets taken down inside the 20, tackled by Will Barrow. Sean Jackson comes on the blitz. He's going to be coming from that left side of your screen. There you see him getting blocked by the tackle, and Schuler just finds the hole behind him. Every time Tulsa is blitzed and Cato has had the ball in his hand, he's had Cato with time to the end zone to Schuler. Touchdown. They connected on the first score of the night, and now they connect on the first score here in the second half for Marshall. Dangerous to leave a quarterback like Rakeem Cato in striking distance. That time, Schuler comes free out of the corner. Had to wait for it, Joel. He got caught in no man's land there. Though. Fourth and 11. Evans, pressure. Evans goes down. Sacked by Rashad Myers. <laughs> And even though Tulsa had such a rough night making mistakes, their talent and their depth really takes over down to stretch. Myers just keeps coming on the bull rush, gets his hands on Evans, so Evans can't even make one of those desperation throws. But Rakeem Cato was the guy, his veteran leadership. A lot of times a quarterback will start to force it, not Rakeem Cato. He was terrific tonight, 450 yards, five touchdowns on 57 pass attempts. And I really like how he knows when to put something on the ball because he has a very good arm and he knows when to loft it up to get it over the linebackers. Great feel in the pocket, outside the pocket as well. Experience what goes on in a quarterback's mind and through his eyes in practice because they're not live. And off to Talaferro. Talaferro, he's going to be down right six inch line. Second and goal from inside the one. Talaferro goes airborne, touchdown. Is going to get their seventh win, keep their hopes alive for a Conference USA East Championship and ultimately to play in the Conference USA Championship. This is the only time that you have to go out there and learn. 
you can't learn this through osmosis. Dane Evans is, as we speak, learning those lessons. Third and six here for Tulsa. Over the middle, that is intercepted by Taekwon Lang. And that'll do it. Saw that coming. Just desperation throws for Evans at this point. Nice pressure from Rashad Myers right in the face of Evans. Throws it kind of off his back foot, not able to step in it. It sails on him. Marshall could just end it now. And the freshman, Taekwon Lang, we haven't said his number a lot. This date, November 14th, means so much to the Marshall program. Again, back in 1970, 43 years ago today, it was the plane crash. The first time since then they're playing a game on the road on this day. And these, these players were wearing the helmets with the number 75 decal on there, representing the 75 people who died in that plane crash. And we documented it as the game began, the moment of silence, the movement of the time of the kick to honor the time of the tragedy. A lot of class that Tulsa showed in hosting Marshall on a night like this, and overall very honorable endeavor for everybody involved. Cato on third and one, passes to Devon Smith. He's gonna stay in bounds, he's got the first down, that'll do it. Back-to-back -back touchdown to close out this game. And they will move to seven and three on the season, five and one more importantly in Conference USA. And they are tied with ECU in the East Division. They will hold those helmets up high in honor of those that were lost 43 years ago today. But Marshall comes on the road, overcomes all the turnovers, and gets a 45-34 victory over Tulsa.